Hello everybody, JT here, back with another video regarding a side axis, a rough and two pass. One of our viewer want to see, but the thing is, I think it depends on the part that you work. Sometimes you need, sometimes you don't. I try not to rough now a part with the five axis two pass because sometimes it you know it complicate to do that and sometimes it's just easier to rough out a part with you know just a three axis and then you yield the five axis uh option to finish the part. For example like this part for me I don't usually rough material on this out. Let's say if you want to finish this too and then floor here. Just like this part, right? I rough out with the three axis two pass, and then I come back and fin it with a five axis two pass to fin it. So let me show you. So this is will be volume mill, 3D volume mill, right? You rough it out mostly like this, and then you cut, you come back with a semi finish with you know rough material. Leave some material, and then this one will be a finite to pass the finite the plate here. So let's see. Let's show you how you can do this. Oh, this one is um, the other two pass. Turn this one to part, and then you will see. Might rub just a three axis, you know, two pass, nothing really fancy. Okay, so I see we still have a lot of material, so you have to clean this one up. Let's close it. Okay, so in here, the three axis, two pass, as you can see. The two doesn't go all the way to bottom and rough this one out because of the option that I pick in here, I use in here. It's too big, but let me show you quickly how 3D volume mill is, and then you can use it. So when you use 3D, you can select the whole thing. The bottom of this will be just, you know, mark and then click somewhere over here and then. You this option right here, you stock everything now it just work like a, you know a 2D volume meal. But I think volume meal you check here and then 3D you check down here. Sometimes you check cavity. I don't know. Maybe let's check cavity and see what it does. Doesn't do anything. Then you have to define cavity or something, but maybe that it for another video. Well, anyway, so you you stop right and then redo it. Let's see what it does here. Oh. Okay, try again. Everything now should be up. This. Okay. Let's do this one first. And I'll show you. Okay. So this one right here, you can see, you don't see the two paths go all the way down here to rub the material. So in here, since I put it too big, right? It doesn't work with them the, the the surface down here so you have to tie this one down sometimes i it depends on material but you know sometimes i tie even smaller than this and then you will see what i mean All right so now you see the two paths go all the way down here and rub this material out 
right? And here is what I mean. So after you rough that's one hour with the three axis. Now you use five axis to semi finite and finish it. So that one is just mark between two curve, um, right? Okay, spiral, uh, semi rough, semi finite. So I'll just put fifty thousand there. And then control it's gonna be five axis and it till at 15 degree okay and this one I leave about ten thousand and then the same two paths I just take this to zero here because it's a finish so you take to zero and you time step over that so it look good and you can see here Come on. Okay, here we go. So it rough out, right? Mostly. And you can see the, oh, it go all the way down here already. So you still have a lot of, you know, stop here to fin it. But what I mean is just, you know, you three exit, easy symbol to rough all this stuff out. You don't have to use five axis to pass to rub this kind of part. And now here's the finite to pass. Take a little bit of time, huh? To render. So, as you can see, this is finite, it's finite all the way down here. And of course, you do the same thing for this play, and then you're going to finish the claw here with the fire axis to pass. Okay, so depend on the part that you have. Sometimes you don't need five axis to pass to rub but let's say for this part right here if you want to rough this one out of course you're going to use five axis and i will show you how to rough this one out okay and you can see this is a five axis to pass and uh, this one is just you know an end meal to finish so i just pick a 250 right okay okay over here it's a multi-axis machining in here you use this option to rough this kind of part you know how so look at this multi-axis rough and of course from ceiling i choose from ceiling because uh, you can do offset from the floor you know like how many passes or something like that but it just for me easy just to pick the ceiling surface and then you know you do you work it from there down adaptive or offset okay i always use adaptive because adaptive it work like a volume meal which is you know it easy on the tool and it faster to clean this one out Zigzag cutting method, zigzag go one way. Well, of course, we do zigzag because you don't want the two to go one way and go out. So, uh, zigzag is good. Okay, intermediate slide from last step. Okay. Everything here is usually I leave there for, right? And now here, since we choose adaptive, so it let you choose what the step over for each pass, right? Everything out here, I'll just leave the If you want tight, if you work with like a hard material or deep pocket, and then you might have to, you know, uh, put this one smaller. Or if you work with the uh, easy material, aluminum, you can go like an eight, an, um, 100 or something like that, whatever you want to do. But this is uh, important for the, the two paths. And in here, you can use uh, 
constant step that means every step down it go that much right or sometimes you see oh that's one only a hundred you know down a hundred depth and then you just do one slide uh, let's say if it's a uh, 500 half in you can do two slide uh, up here you can do you know 250 right so it's the same thing but just you know be careful when you do this when you select the tool what material it is and then you do this accordingly to that okay and here is important this is where it control the tool right so you have a flaw surface you click on that and you pick the flaw right wall of course this wall all of this you pick it and here what i mean when i have a ceiling surface ceiling surface just that top of the part right that you want to work from there down so that's why where i choose offset from the ceiling okay um if you want to leave some material for finish you can put some here five thousand or something like that right but for the purpose of this video i'll just put it to zero so you can see uh, this one usually i leave there for i don't really do anything so let's rough this one now oh i forgot to let close this as you can see the two would just go straight down right and that's not good it's not not ideal so i have to fix that by going here in geodram okay now you can see the two pass ramping down which is it's safer for the tool and it you know you don't break the tool let's render it and see i have to turn this one to part so you can see it better okay Okay, as you can see, this is a five axis uh, roughen. Since we don't leave material, so that's why you see it cut all the way here. But if you leave material, then you can thin it with, you know, a, uh, I think the wall here, you have to thin it with a uh, swap to pass. let me render with the machine so you can see it you have better understand or better uh so you can visualize easier okay oh boy come on. okay so dream down and then there from there it just you know the c axis just move around a little Okay, let's see. Is it on the way? Why is it so slow? Okay. As you can see, it worked like a volume meal. So that's the reason why I selected uh, you know adaptive this offset you know offset it works sometime but this one i want to cut since i only select one you know all the way step down and then i turn the adaptive work better fall out
All right, so I think you get the idea, right? So it's not, for me, it's not always good to rub a part out using a five axis modular five, five axis to pass the pen. But that's how you rub a five axis part out if you want to use it, okay? All right, hope you guys like uh, my video or learn something with me here. And if you have not subscribed, make sure you do. And then I'll do more uh, fire access to pass in the future as well. So make sure you subscribe so you can uh, watch and learn with me. You know, I don't always know everything about fire access, especially full fire access, because I don't work with it a lot. But I think it's fairly easy if you, you know, have the basic understanding of fire access, and you will be able to, you know, try and, and, and make the program on your part. All right, see you guys next time.